like that. Thin. better yeah it's pretty good I think that's uh, gonna work for a thread there we go so those are the threads a little bit of dirt in there feels um, feels nice and smooth it's definitely not cutting my skin I can push in really quite hard and it doesn't cut my skin um, all right welcome back so um, you won't believe it but I found a chunk of uh, steel in my scrap pile, uh, or I shouldn't say scrap pile, but it's in my uh, pile of uh, miscellaneous uh, steel that I use in the workshop that seems to be the exact size, almost the exact size, for a knurled knob that I was planning on uh, machining anyway and knurling. So um, I'm going to just remachine this uh, as, a, as a draw a draw bar knob essentially. Um, so what I got to do is I got to face this off. Um, I'm going to have to thread this portion right here, and then I have to turn this portion right here so that it fits snugly into the um, into the uh, uh, spindle. So I'm going to start with that now. And I got to slow this down to something reasonable. Uh, so 160 RPM perhaps. These are these uh, Kenna Metal um, or Sandvik uh, top notch. Actually, hold on, is it top notch or a lock? Yeah, this is a top notch because it's got a notch in it, but they make a very similar one that's called a top lock, which has just got a little pocket on the side instead. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be using for uh, threading. Uh, i got to get this into a holder, of course. There we go, this should work. Yeah, I can get this up against the work. Nice and straight. Bring that in. Oh yeah, it's perfect. It's square. Very nice. All right. Okay, so I overshot a little bit, so a little bit loose, but it really doesn't matter. Um, so it is a loose fit, but it's going to get glued in there anyway, because this knob is going to get glued into that thread. That's the uh, idea behind it. So once it seats, yeah, like that, it's, uh, yeah, it's good and solid. I got the thread right. I got all this good. Point four five. here we go. jumping back between millimeters and, and, and inches. So this is 1.389. I'm still uh, too big. Yep, I'll keep on going. I'll bring it back. Okay, so it looks like I've, I'm over about a half a millimeter uh, on the diameter. I've cut it over, but that might be okay. 
Um, I'm going to take the chuck off and stick it in the back and see if that works or see if that um, fits is what I meant. Okay, we're at the back of the lathe here. Ugh, didn't want to be lazy and not set up the camera. Yeah, that goes in there. It's not, it's definitely not as snug as I would have liked it to be. Um, but it's fine. Yeah, that's, ah, that's a real shame. Should have paid more attention. All right, I got the spindle here. Got to call it in there. Screwing that in. I'm just going to snug it. Okay, we're back here. I'll turn some lights on. There we go. Let's see if this threads in. Oh yeah, it is threading in. Yeah, it's a little bit loose in there. Yeah, I wish I paid more attention. Okay, that's uh, that's in there. Let's see if it tightens up. Oh yeah, definitely does. Definitely does. It's uh, tucked in real nicely. It's drawn in. Um, I just use a uh, chuck key in here to hold the spindle because I, there's no lock or I can just put it into a higher gear. Uh, but just locking it works well. And yeah, so I think this is going to work out nicely. Uh, so next is um, dressing up that knob and boring it out and putting in some screws. So that is warm to hot, which is amazing. This is the first lathe I've had that uh, has flood coolant built in, and what a game changer that is. I mean, mist to coolant is great, but does not work uh, for long or uh, boring. Okay, so after drilling that with, uh, I think that was a 7 8 uh, bit, that bore is actually really quite smooth. Um, but I'd like to get it to one inch. I like to get this bore to one inch so I can uh, pass through the largest size um, bar through a 5C collet. I think I yeah, we got uh, one inch and eight thou, so that's good. That's my uh, bore right there. Um, and you can see that's nice and smooth. So now I'm